Yeah, hello everyone, I'm Yufei. Uh, nice to meet you everyone here. And I'm gonna share my screen. Yeah. So uh, today I'm gonna share my thesis project with you, uh, which is called the Weaving the Seven Kilometers to Bring People and Water Together by Revitalizing Yangtze Industrial Rural Front in Wuhan, China. Thriving and rapid industrialization over the last 50 years has led to many urgent problems and challenges for post industrial cities fed by China's most iconic river, Yangtze River. The rural front of these cities nowadays is serving as the dumping grounds for industrial contamination, which is aggravated by seasonal flooding. The legacy of contamination results in the gap between the river and human beings and has become a barrier for the site's future development. Using Wuhan Qingshan Industrial Riverfront as a testing ground, the project seeks to develop a phased strategy that makes the retrofitted levy a spine of protective and accessible public, public infrastructure and combines different remediation strategies as a cornerstone to weave, weave the physical and spiritual gap between the river and the people living nearby, and finally embrace and structure the site's future development. Yangtze River is the longest river in Asia and is geographically divided into upper, middle, and lower reach. It has a long-standing history of industrial function and seasonal flooding. Many industrialized cities emerged along the Yangtze River to take advantage of water resources. Since the nation's economic pattern transformed to post-industrial from 2009, many industrial workplaces on the riverfront have been abandoned, leaving a contaminated riparian environment. Meanwhile, from June to August each year, cities in the Yangtze River Basin encounter heavy rainstorms. This leads to numerous storm events. Flooding intensifies the industrial contamination of the river and its riparian environment. Contamination and frequent flooding has worsened ecological health of wetlands and has led to widespread and severe ecological degradation. Wuhan is one of the worst industrially contaminated cities with the highest risk of major flooding and worst ecological degradation. This project aims to reimagine re the relationship between the post-industrial environment, water resources, and urban development in Wuhan as an example for other industrial cities along the Yangtze River. Wuhan is the largest industrial city of the central China and has co-evolved with Yangtze River symbiotically by the, for the past eight, uh, 1,008 years. The once thriving heavy industry in Wuhan has decentralized from 1993 to 2020. Many industrial sites built on the riverside have inevitably become post-industrial um, brownfields. Impacted by residue and ongoing industrial contaminants, the riparian soil of Northeast uh, Riverfront has the high level of contamination and the results in the highest ecological risk. Despite unprecedented advancements in engineering, most urban areas still suffer from flooding. The existing levee constructions in Wuhan can be characterized into five typologies shown here. The levee is transformed into recreational riverfront parks in the sloped and terraced typologies. The next two types have levees with a single ecological function or agricultural function, and the last two levee type is made up of unprotected exposed soil, and this is the condition of my site. With the worst soil contamination, high flood risk, and ecological risk, and undeveloped levee condition, the site of my exploration is a seven kilometer long industrial riverfront along the east river bank of Yangtze, located in Wuhan Qingshan district. 
Throughout this history, the Qingshan Industrial Rural Front was a nexus of heavy industry, water transportation, commerce, and the river based activities until early 21st century. Many of China's milestone heavy industries were built here with iconic massive industrial artifacts. However, because of the urbanization and the change of industrialization over the years, the size, transportation, housing prices, and population have increased a lot, while the riverfront open spaces have been gradually replaced by neglected industrial land, and the riverfront lost its function to link the people living by and the Yangtze River. Looking into the site specifically, the riverfront is dominated by industrial lands with little accessible open spaces. From west to east, the site is dominated by bug and ferry terminal, abandoned industrial port, abandoned shipyard, Wuhan industrial port, and the abandoned trade port. The, uh, these six industrial businesses along the riverfront have their own industrial activities from past to the future. The Qingshan Industrial Port, Shipyard, and Trade Port have been abandoned, while the warehouse and ferry terminal will continue to thrive in the future, and the industrial port will be demolished and transformed in the next few years. The industrial uses have greatly impacted the riparian soil and led to contamination, uh, to petroleum contamination and heavy metal contamination widespread riverfront. Due to the contaminated land occupied by active and abandoned industrial uses, the existing riverfront trail system is disjointed and undeveloped with limited access to the rural front from adjacent neighborhoods. As flooding occurs season seasonally, the contamination worsens and threat threatens adjacent neighborhoods a lot. The rural front area ha here has formed a barrier cutting off the connection between the people and the river. Therefore, the future development in riparian areas, including the land transformation and neighborhood expansion, is, are facing the huge, cha huge challenges caused by this great discon disconnectivity. To eliminate these contaminated and inaccessible barriers through landscape design, I first analyzed and uh, summarized the site characteristics, including specific existing living conditions, meaningful artifacts, ecological elements, and the past and future human activities happen on the site. Then I identified four types of site restoration driven landscapes that guide me to bring the river to the people. These are tourism driven landscape, eco cultural driven landscape, social driven landscape, and the production driven landscape. My goal is that the tourism driven landscape will end in a massive public touristic amenity, integrating with multifunctional tourism facilities and accessibility. The eco cultural um, driven landscape will be a city level cultural park integrating with a two kilometer long um, ecological belt providing industrial memory and abundant ecological value for rivering ecosystem. The social driven landscape will be a meaningful and accessible social gathering space that includes water plazas, community centers, and other outdoor interactive spaces for future adjacent neighborhoods. And the production driven landscape will introduce adaptive uh, agricultural field to enhance the local agricultural economy um, while offering riverfront accessibility. I will choose one side from each type of landscape as a demonstration. Guided by the goals of four types of restoration driven landscapes, my design strategy is proposed in phases. Phase one is called infrastructure. It introduces 
the accessible retrofitted flood protection infrastructure on the river's edge to prevent the Yangtze River from being contaminated by flooding of riparian contaminated soil. The phase two is to apply in situ remediation strategies when, with vital remediation mecha mechanisms on, on corresponding contaminated land to treat ongoing or residue contamination. The phase three is called integration. It unifies the circulation of the new riverfront infrastructure and adjacent neighborhoods and creates various spaces for people to gather by the water. So firstly, site one, the tourism driven landscape is an open operational bug and ferry terminal with exposed soil located between the river and the small hill without, without flood protection. It has ongoing petroleum contamination. In the phase one, the warehouse industry will be relocated to the upper land and the multifunctional building structure will, will rebuild with rebuilt ferry terminal will be built at the river's edge to function as a protective infrastructure and hard carping for contaminated soil close to the water. This infrastructure will accommodate ferry administrations, a post-industry um, gallery, and offer, offer open spaces for cruising, strolling, and other touristic activities. The upper promenade will connect to the adjacent levee avenue. In the phase two, the, ri the riser filtration technology is applied to a terraced wetland with a gabion wall the contaminants of ongoing discharge from upper land industry, exposed to soil and the surface runoff is filtered, cascading along the west and to, along the wetland. The influx of filtered water is controlled by the uh, stru uh, structured Gabion Gate. Part of the filtered water uh, will be reused for to, to cultivate the wetland plants. The elevated boardwalks offer safe access for visitors and residents from neighborhoods to the water. In the phase three, the Gabion Gate is permanent open. The river flows into the wetland and forms scenic wetland ponds, providing a cooling environment and water-based activities in summer. More accessible trails and the boardwalks will be introduced to welcome increasing numbers of visitors. The second site, consists of abandoned shipyard with an unstable earthen levee and exposed contaminated soil close to the water. The phasing one is starting with retrofitting the unstable earth levee to a series month at the water's edge. This kind of month levee is structured by the soil from hard capping ex excavation and is covered by diverse vegetation to slow down the water flow and prevent major flooding. At the same time, industrial artifacts on the site are preserved. During the process of vital remediation, the organic contamination on riparian soil is treated by the vital degradation plots. The faster growing plants will be planted to extract heavy metal contaminations in this abandoned shipyard and will be harvested on a schedule. The protective weaving trails across the mount are introduced to bridge this area and connect to the touristic landscape. The overlook bridge will be built to connect the uh, social driven landscape. And um, in the phase three, the shoreline is stabilized and the biodiversity Diversity is increased by integrating the vegetated landform and the multi layered riverine aquatic plants and wetland plants. The weaving trails are extended to connect the new post industrial park with various ex exciting artifacts. Um, and, uh, and the weaving trails uh, will be connected to the uh, appreciation and the bird view corridor, to, which is connected to the social driven landscape. 
The site three is a social driven landscape. The, uh, here is the large active industrial port without flood protection infrastructure, and it will be demolished and transformed into a social amenity for future ad adjacent mixed use residential development. In the facing one, the semi underground social center is constructed to protect the land and provide sufficient public amenities for adjacent future development. The elevated industrial port corridor and wharfs remain to create accessibility to the water. And the social center connects to the production driven landscape and also the uh, um, cultural eco driven landscape. In the phasing two, vegetated berms are created on exist existing um, topography. The faster growing trees will extract and stabilize the heavy metal contaminations and the plants will be heaviest on schedule. After the remediation, the land is transformed into a clean, interactive, open space for incoming communities. The remaining wharves and uh, um, docks are developed to, com uh, to com accommodate more water-dependent festivals such as river crossing uh, and dragon boating every year. The last side is production-driven landscape. It's, it's a contaminated agricultural land with exposed soil close to the water. To retain the agricultural function of the land, terraced infrastructure with connective boardwalks and retaining walls were built in the river's edge. It not only functions as a levee but promotes the local farming industry. Rice can grow on the lower land where the river frequently in, in and inundates to form a paddy field. Local crops like um, sunflowers uh, or peas can grow on the rest of terraces. In the facing two, beans and peas are planted in a rotation cycle of three to five years. Specific crops such as corn and soybean will degrade, will degrade the organic contamination on the site. After decontamination, ideal farmland can cultivate local crops efficiently and productively for the local farming markets in the long term. From 2022 to 2035, by weaving the accessibility, infrastructure, eco ecology, and the human activity, the Wuhan Qinshan Riverfront is protected, remediated, and reconnected as a vibrant and accessible open space for both short and long term needs, adapting in anticipation of future development and people's desire desire to be close to the water. Thank you, everyone. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, Yufei, for one of the most uh, complete and detailed projects I've seen so far in my career. A uh, really amazing project uh, on your on your side. Uh, before we, we take questions, actually, I'm going to ask uh, Wiki to present, and we're going to have a, a, a round of questions at the end of the presentation, if that's okay with you. OK. Thank you very much, Yufei. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ricky Zhao, and my thesis title is called Surviving in Between Water, Guarding the Porpoise Habitat in the Yangtze River. Um, porpoises are aquatic marine mammals similar in appearance uh, as dolphins. The species I studied for my site particular, oh, sorry, it's called the Yangtze Finley's Purpose, uh, which are currently uh, in critically endangered situation and with only around a thousand remaining in China, Jiangxi River. So my thesis statement is, this thesis addresses the history of detrimental human activities on the Yangtze River that has resulted in the systematic decline of the Yangtze Finley's purpose population. The proposed urban purpose reserve in Nanjing, China will create a unique opportunity to help safeguard this critically endangered species by restoring degraded habitat in the highly visible and public context. Design interventions will construct the public purpose habitat that helps restore the river's damaged ecology 
encourages biodiversity and raises awareness by engaging and educating people, all of which will aid in uh, saving this critically endangered species from extinction. Um, I started by mapping out the potential actors in the cycle, showing that the interconnected condition of the Yangtze River, human activity, and the purpose. The damage will down to the environmentalist the possible extinction of the biodiversity within the Yangtze River, which will ultimately negatively impact us. So the thesis proposes that conversely, positive human activities will help safeguard the purpose in the future. The Yangtze Phoenix purpose lives in the Yangtze River. This shows the location of my thesis site mentioned within the lower reaches of the Yangtze River Basin. The built up area of the Yangtze River economic belt has expanded in the upper, middle, and lower reaches. Most of the freshwater resources for people living in the Yangtze River Basin comes from the Yangtze River. But at the same time, urbanization of human activities discharges industrial and urban wastewater into the Yangtze River that heavily produce the habitat of the purposes. Today's Yangtze River is faced with various problems that arise between conservation and development. There are tens of thousands of large and small uh, hydroelectric stations in the Yangtze River Basin that have changed the country's hydrology. The Gojo Dam, constructed in 1988, was a major cause of ecological degradation downstream within the Yangtze River. The Three Gorges Dam um, further had damaged habitat conditions after its construction in 2006. In fact, the health of the Yangtze River is determined by the health of aquatic mammals that depend on the river for survival. The annual wild catches have dramatically decreased in the past few decades due to degraded, degraded living conditions within the river. Hydroelectric projects are the major cause of their population decrease. Overfishing and illegal fishing has even further reduced food sources and heavily impacts on the survival of these species, including the Yangtze Finless purpose. And the related species, the Baiji River Dolphin, was declared functionally extinct in 2006. Unfortunately, the Yangtze family's purpose is heading the same way as the Baiji River Dolphin due to these human activities. They both have been living in the river for 25 million years. But as a mammalian species at the top of the food chain, survival depends on heavily on habitat stability and food sources availability. To better conserve the remaining population of the purpose, China has recently prohibited all fishing activities in the Yangtze River and its tributaries for a 10 year period starting January 1st, 2020. This is an opportunity to revive the food sources and habitat for the Phoenix purpose and other threatened species. Uh, Wang Ding is one of the earliest researchers studying on the purpose at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. He said that under the current circumstances, conservation cannot be comprehensive nor can it be done. Preservation of seed species is now the key and the most urgent conservation measure, which means that we have entered a critical moment of conserving the remaining population in order for them to reproduce. Since 1987, there have been uh, 10 nature reserves established along the Yangtze River to protect the river dolphin. Um, and the purpose. There were an estimated of 2,000 purposes in 1991, but 15 years later, when the river dolphin was declared as functionally extinct, it was also recognized that the uh, number of purposes had dramatically uh, drastically decreased. So this urgency to conserve the remaining population of the purpose is a priority and requires even more immediate actions. Compared to terrestrial species, conserving aquatic mammals has greater complexity and uncertainty. In the Yangtze River, busy shipping traffic, uh, fishing activities, um, pollution emissions, sand dredging, and other issues have threatened the habitat and survival of the river's animals. This analysis of 256 purposes deaths from 2008 to 16 shows the percentage caused by direct or indirect human activities. So part of my thesis investigates additional design strategies to revitalize purpose habitat through the treatment of environmental contamination and the establishment of new food sources. 
Matissa Site de Nancing, a provincial in situ nature reserve established in 2014, creates the only urban setting to observe the purposes. One of the key objectives proposed in the Yangtze Finley's Purpose Rescue Group pl Plan 2016-25 is the strengthening of in situ conservation measures. Therefore, the CSIS will use the existing site of the Nanjing Reserve to create a more proactive catalyst in the restoration and revitalization of the species. By mobilizing this publicly accessible urban site, the protection of the purpose can become a public endeavor. So looking at this diagram again, introducing positive and proactive human activities at Nanjing Purpose Reserve will have a beneficial role in the cycle and the life of the purpose. The Nanjing site is one of the three types of nature reserves providing different habitats for the purposes. Breeding in captivity in an indoor pool, accidental or trust location conservation in a semi-natural environment, and the in situ conservation in the urban setting of Nanjing. The in situ site currently houses a few observation plazas, but does nothing to help improve the life of habitat or of, of the purpose. So by studying other nature reserve zones that are providing favorable and successful purpose habitats, all of these programs will be introduced within the expanded in situ site. The current location, a condition of the Nancing site includes frequent shipping traffic sharing the river with the purpose. The existing uh, purpose observation park attracts uh, visitors to the river, but does not improve the purpose's degraded habitat and depleted food source. And the government uh, response to this has been to purchase juvenile fishes to be released periodically into the river. Because this site is part of the government's nature reserve system, any pro uh, proposed programs will be required to meet nature reserve regulations such as the core zone, buffer zone, and experimental zone. As my chosen site is situated in the experimental zone, the proposal will revitalize the purpose habitat and fill in an ecological gap between two existing adjacent wetland parks. To design a purpose habitat, we need to study their behaviors in the river. Purposes prefer a shallow and coastal water with a maximum of four meter depth. Compared to other cetaceans, the sonar frequency of the purpose is ex extremely high. They use echolocation to communicate and detect food sources. Their detection range is generally tens of meters. So within the nature reserve zones, shipping traffic are um, strictly reduced and monitored. This opportunity will be taken advantage of the new proposal with the creation of abundant food sources at the shoreline, drawing purposes away from the active shipping traffic zone. Another opportunity emerges with the governmental policy that prioritizes ecotourism destinations to address environmental protection and promotes nature conservation and sustainable development. Nanjing's Purpose Reserve as the only urban reserve on the Yangtze River has great potential as the destination to actively educate and engage the public in conservation efforts. My two design strategies employs these two primary goals to help safeguard the future of the purpose. The restoration of the purpose habitat and the education of the public. To revitalize purpose habitat, the proposal introduces fish pond, a production using mulberry fish ponds to replenish the purpose's food sources and constructed wetlands to restore the water's edge and attract purposes to the shore. But another critical aspect is to raise a public awareness of the purpose's dire situation so that it can never happen again. This urban site will also be a destination landscape of education and memorial Site elements will be connected by an immersive narrative walk for the public to learn about the Yangtze River species, remember the Baizi dolphin's extinction, and understand what is necessary to conserve, restore, and respect the Finland's purposes. The site has an area of 0 0.54 kilometers squared, um, measures 1.1 kilometer facing the Yangtze River and 700 meters facing the tributary. This perspective illustrates the current site conditions marked in blue and areas to be repurposed marked in red. I'm expanding the uh, current site 
and extending the site beyond the government proposed observation plaza to effectively use adjacent abandoned land um, to revitalize purpose habitat by including spaces for food production and west wetland restoration, all supported and structured by areas for observation and education. The site is bounded by constructed levees and trees planted along the shoreline that protect the land from flooding, but also makes the water's edge inaccessible for people to observe the purpose. My new strategy will accommodate flooding, but will also allow visitors to engage with the purpose at an accessible water's edge. Access and visibility is one of the most valuable ways to remind the public about the urgency in their conservation. The current purpose observation plaza on site um, features observation platforms and exhibition areas, but it does not address purpose habitat, riverfront access, or even allow easy visibility of the species. So my reimagined purpose education plaza will connect and culminate all site educational programs and will become the final destination for purpose viewing and public fish release events. The proposed site uh, design capitalizes on the dynamic cycle of the site. This calendar shows the opportunities for intersection and engagement between different activity patterns. The outer ring in gray shows how agricultural activities, according to the Chinese calendar, start in spring with mulberry management and growth to release, releasing the mature fishes into the river by the end of the year. In the middle, um, Visitor cycles are illustrated showing public holidays with a rise in tourism and school calendar showing potential field trips and education. The inner ring in yellow shows the life cycle and activities of the purpose in order to understand the best times for observation, especially during the breeding period. Uh, the project fills in the gap between two adjacent wetland parks with aquaculture, wetlands, and public engagement and education all devoted um, to improving the life and future of the Finland's purpose. It creates a living a riverfront condition that allows people to get close to the river for ideal purpose observation. It connects the site's multiple programs using a narrative educational walk. This path following the route of the Yangtze River helps visitors understand how human actions and interventions can either negatively or positively affect the Yangtze River Basin and the Finland's purpose. Multiple entry points and pathways connected to the narrative walk representing the interconnected tributaries of the Yangtze River. Mulberry fish ponds are introduced on site to create a permanent abundant food source for the purpose. The soil cut from the ponds create elevation changes that represent the natural geographic condition of the Yangtze River Basin flowing from west to the east. The purpose has a significant nickname, the Smiling Angel, based on its permagrain smile. This project will be named as the National Purpose Smile Memorial Park to attract people to witness and learn about the Yangtze River habitat. The memorial is to remember the Bite Sea Dolphin's extinction, but also to celebrate the Finland's purpose's perseverance. So now I'll take you through the project elements and as if you are a visitor to the site, following the brochure map of the Yangtze narrative walk. The walkable map starts from the upper ridge, where you could enter the highest point of the path from the welcome center, learn about the historical timeline of the Yangtze, the existence of the extinct river dolphin, and the family's purpose. Representing the natural conditions of the upper ridges, this area around the Welcome Center is filled with forest species and grasslands. Here you will begin to encounter the mulberry fish ponds and um, where the excavated soil is reused to fill the site to clarify legible elevation changes. Using native species, um, these upland species help to restore a native ecosystem. Next, as you enter the middle ridge, you will observe the massive aquaculture uh, production of fish species. The fishermen who have changed careers due to the 10 year fishing ban will be manage these ponds and will live in the adjacent fisherman village. 
The twist turn turns of the past represent the river condition in the middle reach and position the visitors to view at uh, with different aspects of the active fish production from the elevated uh, pathway. This section cuts through another entrance and access points, the fish ponds, and shows the elevated pathway in the background. The Mulberry Fish Pond is an ancient and complex multidimensional eco-agricultural system that originated in the Yangtze Delta in southern China. It functions as a part of a larger scale reservoir for water storage, flood regulation, and drought mitigation. The sustainable closed-loop system reproduces fish species that would be released regularly to the shoreline to provide the purpose with abundant food sources. And other economic benefits produced by the fish ponds will be uh, used to support purpose research. Enhancement and releasing is an artificial way that direct, uh, directly releases juvenile fishes, fish eggs, and mature fish into the natural water, such as oceans, rivers, and lakes to restore or increase population numbers and maintain the stability of the ecosystem. My CISA site will become an excellent location for this public and celebratory event to happen regularly. As you enter the lower reach, you would encounter a variety of indoor and outdoor educational components. First is the rescue center. When the injured purposes are found in the reserve zone, they can be brought to the temporary pool for rescue and treatment. The scientists and researchers will take care of them on site before releasing them back to the wild. As they're very shy, the public can only observe them through glass balls. Next is the new education plaza. This includes play areas and outdoor classrooms. And towards the end of the uh, pass is the public event plaza where the fish are transferred from the ponds ready to be released where the narrative walk meets the river. The section cuts through the exterior educational programs, the play spaces, event spaces, and the plaza. But during seasonal flooding, activities will not be affected, but people could observe the ecosystem being restored at the water's edge. Constructed terrace wetlands creates an edge condition that prevents erosion during the flood season while making it accessible for people to observe the purposes closely at the riverfront. These chosen wetland species create a living edge that helps restore the transparency of the river water, which is favorable to the purposes. The end of the narrative walk is represented at the end of the Yangtze River flowing into the East China Sea. This is where the public fish release will happen. The circular arch represents the echolocation waves as our way of communicating to the purposes. The purposes are attracted to the fish sources, making this an excellent observation spot for the public. Floating ecosystems are attached to the edge to clean the water and increase biodiversity for the other species. So my hope for the future is that um, the Yangtze Feelings Purpose has entered a critically and critical moment to its conservation to ensure their survival conservation efforts need to broaden their scope to restore the reverse ecosystem, promote public awareness of our living environment. In recent decades, conservation of the Yangtze Feelings Purpose has received widespread attention from the Chinese government, which has led to the establishment of natural legislation that protect the Yangtze River's ecosystem and this critically endangered species. Although restoring the Yangtze River's ecosystem is a slow process, but with the collective effort of the government, scientists, research, growing knowledge, and public awareness, we can see a promising future in conserving the species remaining population. Um, my thesis site suggests that design can play a key role in bringing together the ecology and education necessary to facilitate this goal. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ricky. Uh, thank you for this amazing presentation. We have a very inspiring project uh, addressing so much challenges. Uh, also so on time, I think, with the studio that we're, <laughs> that we're delivering right now. Um, before we start um, taking some questions, perhaps from the students or from the other colleagues who are present today, 
Um, I really want to, uh, wanted to highlight the very interesting way that you uh, both addresses questions of, of, of working with natural cycles and working with natural, uh, really not mastering nature, but really adapting your project to the natural processes that are, are uh, at work uh, um, in both your, your cases. Uh, for example, the farming of the mulberry uh, and the whole cycle that you were just explaining, I think was uh, very inspiring uh, for students. Uh, as you know, we have similar situation or we have comparable situations here in, in Quebec with the St. Lawrence River uh, being threatened by different um, industrial uh, urbanization processes, pollution and so on, where we also want to preserve the natural qualities and the um, habit habitability of, of, the, of the St. Lawrence River for different species, uh, such as the beluga, for example. So um, I don't know if there's any questions from the public right away. I don't uh, see... Yes, sorry, Daniel Dajne, sorry, Daniel Dajne, yes, our, our director of the department um, would like to ask a question. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, yes, I have uh, one question per, uh, per presenter. Uh, yes, uh, I was very interested, uh, you know, I work on phytotechnology, so things like wetlands and and green infrastructures and things like that so you know you you both your uh, uh your presentations were very interesting i have a question for uh Yufai, if i pronounce your name well um yeah it's, it's it's a more technical question it's about uh the type of contaminants uh mm -hmm. do you know exactly uh which contaminant you have in your soil where are they located and have you is your um planting plan uh, made according to uh, these locations and did you choose your plants according to the type of contaminants that you uh that you had in in the soil yeah thanks for your question uh i would say yes um uh, so um can i just reshare my screen mm, yeah so i did uh analysis of the contamination on the site uh, according to the data from the government um sorry for okay so you had uh, access to these data that's great because sometimes in on uh, yeah. contaminated sites, it's sort of very difficult to to have access to those data, which are sometimes uh, uh, private and, and not disclosed uh, so easily. Yeah. So, yeah, this one. Yeah. Uh, okay. Even though I got the data from the government, but it's uh, almostly a uh, general distribution on the site. And okay. the main uh, two types of contamination are the petroleum and the heavy metal. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, before I made this map, and I do, uh, I did. Um, a more detailed uh, mapping for the contamination distribution. The heavy metal includes the, um, uh, it, uh, including um, iron, uh, including uh, CU and uh, uh, zinc, and, uh, and the petroleum contamination is many, uh, is many um, the, uh, uh, PHC on the side and uh, um, okay. yeah and and uh, uh, but uh, to get a more uh, general analysis and because uh, uh, my 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 proposal is more like urban design process uh, yes, urban sure. design design so uh, after discussion with my professor I tend to make um, more um, more general analysis yeah, sure. from yeah mm -hmm. from from uh from this point of view and so i map out the uh um location of 
uh, the petroleum and heavy metal contamination on the site and the, the selection of um, plants are native and uh, correspond to the uh, location of each types of contamination. Um, okay. I'm gonna show, I, I've already showed in my, in each ty types of uh, landscape strategy. Yeah, here. So, yeah, sure. I noticed yes. that. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will have to leave you because I'm meeting a student and I will let other uh, uh, participants uh, ask you uh, more questions. Of... Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, is there any students who would like to ask questions to the two presenters? You can raise your hand or you can write in the chat if you'd like. Well, I have a question actually, um, waiting for students to make up their mind about it. Uh, I, I just wanted to know, I mean, how do you feel about having uh, completed your master's at Toronto and then working for your final project on a Chinese site? Was it difficult to adapt what you were learning in Toronto to the Chinese context? Because I guess the plants are not the same, the, the way that politics is conducted is not the same, the, the you know landscape management and approaches are not the same. So how do you felt about having to um, you know work with these two contexts in, in parallel? Maybe we you can or you fail as you want, right? You can answer this question. Yes, I agree. It was definitely the biggest challenges for us because um, before we can easily travel to our thesis sites. And this year, um, especially, I think many data are difficult to be found online. So our, especially my thesis was lacking a lot of site analysis data. If I could easily go there, I can take photos and ask people about the conditions. So that was something that I'm lacking and I'm hopefully to, um, to do a more comprehensive analysis for the future if I have the chance. Yeah. But I think from many things online, we we're able to collect the data we needed. It's just that those details for the site condition is quite hard to collect. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. I, I must say I spent a lot of time on collecting the data and uh, spent a lot of time on uh, grabbing the, those information <laughs> and uh, emailing to the government to ask, ask for some help. Uh, but uh, just be a little a, a little more uh, fortunate because my uh, side is my hometown and I have some friends there. They can help me uh, to take some photos and uh, 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 give me some videos for the site. Uh, so, but I think um, uh, it's a more, it's a kind of more um, memorable and uh, uh, Oh, unforgettable experience for me to uh, work on a site that uh, is past for uh, that is um, belongs to my past and uh, when I when I'm in Toronto, which uh, is is become my future. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you for this beautiful answer. <laughs> um, any questions from uh, from the students or from the teaching team, perhaps? also who are invited to ask questions not for this time well thank you um so really i wanted to take you thank you both for for your presentation i think they were so inspiring uh not only for the students in the studio but i think for me as well as a professor here uh, at the school of urban planning and, uh, and landscape architecture to to see how much um colleagues from other universities might also work on both similar topics but in a very different way in a very inspiring way, I'd say. I think there's much to be learned from the way that you both delivered your, your final project. And I hope this is really um, be remembered by the students in, in the way that they're conducting their, their own uh, studio project and their final project. Uh, I know you are both now um, working as landscape architects. So I, I would like to wish you very, very good luck. I hope uh, we will uh, keep in touch uh, 
in the very near future. I we discussed last time we talked together. We discussed the idea of maybe pushing to present your project to your uh, to the local authorities uh, in China, which I think would be a very interesting uh, thing to do. And um, this is something we could uh, potentially uh, work on together. So. Thank you very much, Wiki and Yufei. Uh, I wish you well and uh, see you soon. Thank you for inviting us. And thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. Bye bye. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye.